Hey everyone, today we have a very special guest joining us from the other side of the world. He's the former BKB champion with over 90 boxing matches under his amateur and pro career. He recently fought under the BKFC banner. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from the UK, Tyler El Tornado Goodjohn. How are you doing, brother? Glad to have you on. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Um, uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. So uh, I want to jump right into it. I know you've been going back and forth on Instagram with uh, BKFC, especially calling out the uh, president, David Feldman. Uh, sounds like you want to fight again, but he's not too thrilled to have you back. What's the situation there? Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I was done with BKFC anyway. I asked um, I asked to be released from my contract about six weeks ago. Um, and then Dave Feldman publicly went online and obviously said that he didn't like me and that, and that he had fired me, but me, me and Dave know that you know I asked to be released six weeks before, so yeah, I'm now I'm looking for a new home now. Um, but Is it I would personal? Like to fight. It seems a bit personal. Well, I mean, to be honest, like it is personal. Like for me, he treated me very badly. Um, you know, as a as a fighter that you know I travelled the other side of the world on my own. I got I got treated very very badly by BKFC. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I asked to be released and I was going to go my other way and, and go to another promotion. Um, but he, like I say, he, he's the one that made it personal. He's the one that then went online and said that he didn't like me and made all these mad moody faces and all that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would love to I would love to beat him up. Uh, anywhere you're, you're, I guess, uh, ideal home next next stop. Um, I mean, to be honest, I like I've always had my eye on BYB. Um, I think it very much suits my style in, in that it's you know it's close quarters, small triangle. Um, yeah, I look at that and I think that's you know if if I was to make a ring that would suit me, I would say that that's the ring. So um, yeah, that looks like that could be a lot of fun. That's interesting. Uh, so I guess you won't see the fight with Jason Knight then, huh? Because I, I know that's a fight you were calling for since you even before you even got to BKFC. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you know, you know, Jason, you know, we, we had some friendly banter and that. And then he obviously commented on my fight against Fenley and, and spoke really badly of me and, and again made it quite personal. Um, I, you know, I, I haven't really got any interest in, in fighting him now. And I don't think... I think, you know, he, he's going the MMA route now more than he was bare knuckle. So, yeah, we're just going our separate ways. Um, I'm, I, yeah, like I say, I like the look of BYB. So let's see what happens there. Yeah, I think that would have been a great fight for you. Uh, he is a big name, like you mentioned in some other interviews. He is a big name on this side of the world. Uh, but personally, I think your, your style is just uh, too much for him. You, you move very well. You're very fast. And the yeah. angles you create, I think, would it's too much for most of the fighters. But I think Jason Knight, uh, for sure. Yeah, you know, with Jason Knight, he, he obviously fought Fenley, didn't he, in the uh, bare knuckle MMA. And I mean, to be fair, if that had been a bare knuckle boxing match, he would have lost that fight. You know, he got knocked out. He, you know, he's, he, don't get me wrong, the guy fights with a, a massive heart and he's tough as nails. But, you know, you can only be so tough in this game, you know. Absolutely. Uh, actually, speaking of which, uh, we got news yesterday that Justin Thornton passed away from uh, the injuries that he sustained back in August at BKFC 20. Uh, a lot of commissions are now urging bare knuckle boxers and bare knuckle fighters in general to proceed with caution. Uh, I guess, do you have anything to say on those comments? Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, we, we all know what we're, we're putting on the line when we get in there. Um, but, you know, for me personally, I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, um, you know, it might sound a little bit, um, I don't know what the word is, but, um, you know, I, for me, I, I would die in that ring. And, you know, I know, I know a lot of people can go, oh, yeah, you, you, you know, you're just saying it. Generally, I would. And I think every, I think real other real fighters would say exactly the same. You know, we all, um, obviously it's horrible that someone has died from it. But, um, you know, if, you, if you'd asked him, he would have known the, the consequences that go with fighting, especially bare knuckle fighting. Um, we're a different kind of person. <laughs> it's that Viking mentality, man. Yeah, yeah, of course. You, you know, you go, you're going to war. You, um, and you, 
we'd be stupid and naive if we were to say that we didn't know the sort of consequences of, of doing what we're doing. So, yeah, we do it regardless, you know. Did you know Justin at all? Have you been on the same card as him? No, I haven't. No, I was at his first bare knuckle war. I don't, I don't, I'm I mean, not sure to be honest. honest. Yeah, I knew, I knew the guy, um, who he fought, um, but yeah, I didn't actually know him. But yeah, you know, this it's um, it's always horrible to hear that someone someone's died in, in the sport because obviously, yeah, like I say, it sort of shakes you a bit and think, well, that could you know that perhaps could have been me. But like I say, um, yeah, we're warriors, so I think we'd all say the same thing anyway, you know. Yeah, our thoughts and prayers going out to his family. Uh, but you know, with speaking of bare knuckle boxers, I saw that you just posted. Uh, Louis Palomino just reached out to you. Uh, yeah. You, you, I guess you mentioned that he said some uh, positive words, put you back into good spirits. So uh, glad to see you guys yeah. have a positive relationship now after the fight. Yeah, it's been. Um, yeah, like you know, I've been. I open up. Been struggling with like depression for about four years now. So I was just having uh, going through one of my little. Uh, you know, moments um, or oh, a couple of days, really. But um, it was just, you know, it was uh, an out of the out of blue phone call from Lewis Palomino, and he just got me back on track. You know, said some really kind, positive words, um, and yeah, I just, just got me out of bed, got me thinking straight, and you know, it's just do you know what it is. It's just being around another fighter. Do you know what I mean? Like I said to him, I said, Lewis, you know the game. You know, you've been as, around as long as I have. Um, and I'll just, you know, after the fight, obviously the whole uh, getting fired from BKFC, you know, I've sort of been in this grey area of not knowing what's going on. So um, it's really, you know, it's been, it's been hard to deal with. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm getting back on track now. And um, yeah, looking like, you know, B BYB could be the ho next home for El Tornado. Sounds exciting. Uh so between glove boxing and bare knuckle boxing, I know you have a lot of experience in both. You started off as a glove boxer and did pretty well. Uh, mm -hmm. So I guess, what would you say personally is the biggest difference between the dynamic of the two, two sports? And uh, I guess you prefer bare knuckle, but I guess if you can tell us why. Yeah. Um, yeah, like as, as a boxer, you know, I, I achieved a lot as a boxer. I was a national champion. I was national professional champion. Um, you know, I, I love boxing, but my... I was I was fought with my heart too much, you know. I, I was the guy that you know. You could, to be fair, it didn't matter what card you put me on. I fought on anti Joshua cards. I fought on a lot of world title fights, and I stole the show because I come to fight. And you know the the better the better boxers, the guys that could could use the ring and jab and move and stuff like that and get out of the way. That they're, they're the ones that I lost to, you know, because I I wanted to be in the fights, and eventually I then. At the age of 26, I actually got banned from boxing for talking about uh, using saunas and, and salt baths and methods like that to lose weight. I actually got banned from... Is that from, not legal uh, in boxing? Because I know so, in MMA, it's very popular. Yeah, so, I mean, everyone does it. I mean, every time I speak to someone about this, their first their first question to me is like, yeah, but doesn't everyone do this? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, you're just not allowed to talk about it, obviously. I, I got banned. Um, and again, you know, I, I was in a hole where, you know, I just spent 16 years of my life doing something and then all of a sudden I'm banned from doing it. So, um, yeah, bare knuckle boxing pulled me out of that hole. And I just, I, I've just, uh, like I say, it's, it's, it's my, it's my sport. I've just acclimatised to it. I like, I like being in them trenches. I like fighting. And, you know, the main difference with boxing and, and bare knuckle is, is the pace and you are at some point in that fight, you are going to stand and trade. And it's just whether or not you can stand and trade is to, if you're going to win or not, you know? So, um, yeah, I love Ben Uckle. I think it's, you know, we're a different breed of, of fighter, to, you know, to do it, you know? Has there ever been any uh, consideration for MMA? Yeah, it's not, there has been a lot. A lot of people have asked me and do you know what? I, I think, you know, as a kid, I started, boxing at, at 10 and and the thing with it with it in england you know boxing boxing is the is the sport do you know what i mean M right. mma has only just sort of started coming about here in england i know it's massive over in america but you know it's getting it's bigger, still and relatively bigger here. New here yeah 
yeah so i mean there's not a lot of there's not like especially where i am now there's not a lot of mma gyms you know so um but i'm telling you now if mma had been about when i was 10 years old i would have started mma i, I love it it's um yeah it's the real deal there's, there's, there's some of them guys the ufc guys and that are absolute weapons they're just yeah have you done any grappling or wrestling training at all or strictly boxing all your life? No, nah, just all boxing. So, like, we've yeah. obviously, when I fought Palomino, like, the first thing that he done is, you know, where is it where I roll in? I, I like to use my head movement and roll it in the shots. I've rolled straight into one of his clinches and he's just gone, boom, like that. I ripped two uppercuts. So it was like, do you know what I mean? It, it, <laughs> Yeah, so I, that's one thing that I need to get start getting used to. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, like, you know, trying it out and learning it, to be fair. Yeah, like uh, myself and uh, my co-host, we both did judo for 10 years. We wrestled. So we have a strong grappling uh, base, yeah. but not too much in the striking. And, uh, you know, as I'm getting older, I kind of wish I did some boxing or kickboxing just to, yeah. to level the playing field a little bit. <laughs> but then to be fair, like when I, when I was over in America, like speaking to like a lot of, the bare knuckle fighters who are on the cards and that obviously like wrestling's like a big thing over in America. Yes. Like wrestling here, wrestling here is like non-existent. We don't do that here. So for like, for us to, you know, that's a big thing to have over us. Do you know what I mean? If being a striker, I'm just going to get taken to the floor. Do you know what I mean? By this yep. wrestling, because I ain't going to know what's going on. So, um, yeah, I, I, I love MMA and I'd love to be able to do it and everything else, but to get, the ground game and everything else up to the level that I'd want, it would just, I think it'd just take too long. Do you know what I mean? It does take Like time. I say, people are going to know know that I'm a ex-professional boxer, bare knuckle boxer, and they're just going to take you to the floor, aren't they? Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the name of the game these days. <laughs> so you said, uh, in speaking of opening MMA gyms, I uh, hear El Tornado Fight Club is just about open. Can you tell us some more about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, it's back, my baby, basically. It's, um yeah, like the last three months since the fight, uh, I put all the money from my fight into this gym. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's looking great. Uh, I'm just literally waiting for some, uh, like, gym matted floor for, for the bit where, for, like, I want to try and get an MMA coach in. Right, awesome. Um, so that, you know, you can do some grappling there and stuff like that. Because like I say, I just, I, I, it's, you know, it's a fascinating sport, to be fair, like, like I say, the guys, the, them top level guys in UFC are full on weapons. You know what I mean? They're like, <laughs> imagine meeting one of them guys in the street or something. Do you know what I mean? It's just. Then the year yeah. night. <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, but yeah, no. So I, I, you know, I want, I want there to be an MMA coach here if, if I can. Uh, and like I say, I openly, I'll help a lot of MMA fighters if they want to travel to me and do, do some striking work and stuff like that. I'll, I'll be more than open to that. That's cool, you know? So, Are you hoping to get, like, I guess, oh, is it going to be open to the public or is this kind of more for MMA or boxing athletes? Uh, no, so? be, yeah. Yeah, no, it's going to be open to the public. Um, I've got, like, a lot of, like, my friends who are now, like, my age and obviously have got, like, normal jobs and stuff like that, but they had amateur fights when I was an amateur, like, years right. ago. So they're like, wow, I want to come back. And I, so that, you know, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be a good laugh. I've got a lot of people. Yeah. Like I say, I've got a lot of people who want to come and try it. Um, my girlfriend, she wants to start boxing actually wants to have a that's fight nice. as well. So yeah. So that's going to be cool. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to, she's going to be my project. Do you know what I mean? See how much <laughs> a good trainer I am. Um, the protege. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, I got one last question before we get to some of the fan questions that they sent us in. Is your OnlyFans business, uh, is it still in business or is that in the past now? No, nah, that's in the past now. Is um, it, Believe it or not, well, I mean, yeah, believe it or not, it was it was stopping me from getting a lot of sponsorships. Really? Uh, yeah, a lot, like, a lot of, a lot of companies wouldn't, wouldn't touch me, do you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, no, I had fun doing it. It was... You know, it was, I lived out every guy's dream, um, banging <laughs> porn, porn stars for about a year. So, yeah, it's all right. Sounds like fun, man. Sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so let's get to some of these fan questions that were sent in. Uh, the first one we got from Stuart James 91. Uh, I, I guess you kind of touched on this, but uh, the question is, why did you leave two bare knuckle promotions on bad terms? I'm assuming BKB was, was the other one. 
Yeah, um, yeah. So, like, to be honest, it wasn't. It wasn't really that I'd left on bad terms with BKB. Um, I'd obviously been offered to come to America uh, and fight, you know. And I just said, look, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to chase the American dream. I'm going to have this fight in America. Um, I mean, to be fair, in hindsight, you know, it obviously it it riled them up and it it, it frustrated them or whatever. Then they, they just went well over the top with attacking me on social media and everything else. And it just went well over the top, you know. And, you know, who, who knows? If if things had been different, I could have gone back there and had a, another fight at BKB, could have had another rematch for Sean George or whatever. But, you know, they, they went well over the top on social media. Um, yeah, and I can't forgive them for that, so... You know, I'll, I'll be looking elsewhere. But, yeah, they, they should have been more professional and uh, they weren't. But BKFC, yeah, I'm out. I'm, I'm you know, regardless of what <laughs> Dave Feldman says about firing me, um, I I was I, I asked that guy to be released about six weeks before that bullshit interview. Are, are you locked in a contract with them? How does it work? Do you have, like, certain so number of fights? Got, yeah, so I've, um, yeah, I had one more fight on my contract with them, but he's obviously fired me now, so... See you later. Got it. All right. Next question we have from Andreas Lorca. He asks, when did you start? Uh, when did you start bare knuckle boxing and why? And he says, saludos de España. So hello from Spain. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah like, uh, like I say, just it was I, I was a professional glove boxer for about seven years. Um, and then I obviously got banned for, for doing a podcast talking about like methods that of losing weight and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, like any fighter w- would, would testify, you know, like it, le- it leaves a hell of a void in your life when I didn't know what to do with myself. Do you know what I mean? So I actually see bare knuckle boxing being like spoke about on, on my like local news station. They were saying like how big, how it's a, the new biggest sport in Britain taking over and all this. I've got, um, you know, I've got the the manager or the promoter's name rung in, bish, bash, bosh. Two months later, I was having my first fight against Tony Laffey, who is an absolute animal, by the way. Um, so, yeah, just threw myself into it. And here I am today fighting, you know, fighting in America. And, yeah, I love it. That's awesome, man. All right, we'll do one last question. We got a question from Beyond Holy Water. Uh, they're asking, how do you land a, a hook in bare knuckle? I, I'm, I guess, is it any different from, from glove yeah. boxing? So, yeah, so something like, like, like I'm going to do at my gym, I'm, I'm, going to do, I'm going to teach bare knuckle because obviously the, you can't throw the same shots with a glove that you're throwing with the bare knuckle. So like by the hook, I like twist around and land with my two with my two knuckles there. So like where, whereas a hook with a glove would be more like land it almost mm-hmm. like that with the glove. Got to make sure you twist it round and like land almost on top of it. Do you know what I mean? Even with the jab. So like when I, when I jab when I was a boxer, I didn't even tense my hand. I'd like flick it almost like you whip it, whip the jab out, but the jab and the bare knuckle, I'm coming, I'm twisting and I'm landing it with the two knuckles. Um, and I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely getting more and more I'm definitely getting better at it because like as fights go by I'm not messing my hands up as much <laughs> like the very start early stages of bare knuckle it was like the early fights my hands were very very bad but like yeah they're cool like the last fight my hands were right so yeah it's definitely something you just got to get used to I I I don't really try I only ever train with the small little gloves on. The four ounce uh, like ones, the little amateur MMA mm-hmm. clubs when you know and stuff like that. Um, but I do pads, bare knuckle, and everything like that as well. Because yeah, there's nothing worse than throwing a, a bad shot and breaking the hand. I don't, I don't know how you guys don't break them. Or I broke my hand a couple of months ago, and it's not a hundred percent. But I mean, I can't imagine going back into fighting right away. Like, <laughs> well, it's funny because I when I was like twenty, what was I twenty four? Yeah, so like five six years ago, I, I was training for a, for a, a title fight in pro boxing. And I was sparring with a guy, I had a big 16 ounce glove on, he had a head guard on and I threw an overhand right and it hit him on the forehead and it, it broke my hand. I got a, sp- a spiral fracture in my hand. Um, and it, but it, like looking back on it, it was a bit of a stupid shot and you just can't throw shots like that. Like, yeah. like, like I say, 16 ounce glove, head guard, 
forehead and I still broke my hand. So that's how easy it's done, you know? Yeah, I forgot who it was. There was a bare knuckle recently that said you have to be a lot more, you have to pick your shots a lot more in bare knuckle boxing because, you know, the odds of you breaking your wrist are just so much higher if you don't hit at the right angle and the right spot. I would say, like, people ask me what's the hardest thing about be, uh, about bare knuckle. I would say the hardest thing is probably is probably your hands. Like, when I fought Sean George for the world BKB title, <laughs> my hands were horrendous. Like, you can hear the commentary saying, like, it actually looks like he's got a pair of boxing gloves on. I remember um, that. I actually saw I, that fight a couple uh, of weeks ago. It's yep. hideous. <laughs> your hands are huge. And I remember just being in there, like, popping my jab out, like, oh, it was just, it was so painful. Do you know what I mean? And after that fight, I remember, obviously, I stayed in a hotel and I drove there. And uh, I actually had to stay at the hotel for like another three nights because my hands were so swollen that I couldn't drive home. Do you know what I mean? I was just, I couldn't even move them. Like, I can't imagine, <laughs> man. You guys are warriors. All you guys, all you <laughs> boxers. I mean, you're a you're def- different breed of fighters, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. It was it was a pleasure having you on. Uh, not sure if there's uh, Thank anything you, very much, man. you want to share with the audience before we wrap it up. Uh, just basically, I'm going to be back. Um, yeah, uh, BKFC uh, uh, trying to uh, trying to bring me down, but I'm going to be back and I'm going to keep doing it, uh, shining in the bare knuckle boxing ring, whether it be in the trigon or whatever. I'm still going to be. I'm still going to be the man to watch. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're the main event, bare knuckle boxer. Uh, would love to have you back on when you open your gym or when you get your next fight scheduled. So uh, yeah, man. would love to have you back, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Take care. Take care, man.